All right, Chris from thattutorguy.com back with another tip to help you study for big tests. We've already covered doing your homework. We've covered a lot of other stuff. And if you haven't seen the video on cookbooks involving the blue paper, oh my gosh, that's my number one tip, bar none, other than do your homework. On this one, I just wanted to mention why practicing out of order is so important. I've sort of mentioned this in passing in a couple other videos, but, um, the reason order matters is because your teacher is going to try and mess you up. The order of sections in a chapter, or if you're studying for the final exam, you know, the ch order of chapters in the book, they always come in the same order. So if you're someone who's sort of flipping through your notes to review stuff, you're seeing things in the same order every time. So you, you don't even realize it's happening, but subconsciously you might say to yourself, oh, I know how to do this type of problem. But maybe the reason you're even recognizing what kind of problem that is, and therefore you like think you know how to do it, is because it's the one that's later in your notebook. Or it's on that, that exam, you remember, oh, I just had that exam last week and that problem was on it. So you're kind of subconsciously registering that, oh, this is from my most recent exam, so it's from section you know, 4.6 instead of 4.1 in this chapter, in the chapter four test. But you don't, re you don't really realize that subconscious thing is going on until you later get to the test and everything's mixed up. And you might not even realize that's not why, that's why you're having math anxiety or sort of freezing up on the test. What's really happened on the test is you're like, uh, I don't, uh, what type of problem is this? Oh, I know I've seen this, da, da, da. But because, you, because it's out of order, it can kind of lock you up. So it's really important to mix up the order. So if you're doing practice problems the night before a test, do them in different orders. If you have old quizzes that you're working from, Look at them in a different order every time. Make yourself up a little practice test where you actually scramble the order a different way each time. Practice going, when you're looking over problems, say to yourself, okay, what steps do I need, i.e. cookbook steps, what steps do I need to do this particular type of problem? And like, how do I recognize that on the test? What keywords in the word problem or in the instructions, like the instructions might say solve the equation, but they could also say find the zeros of the equation. So you gotta just gotta look at that and say, okay, find the zeros, what does that mean? If it says find the zeros, that means solve for X, which I can either do by factoring or synthetic division. You know, that's the kind of decision tree you want to be sort of in your head. So when you sit down the test, it doesn't matter what order the problems are in because A, you've already practiced a bunch of different orders anyway. And the whole point of that was so that when you could, so you could learn to identify each type of problem on its own, no matter if it was the beginning, middle, or end of the test. So work stuff out of order, use flashcards if that's what it takes, like put math problems on flashcards, put the instructions for types of math problems on flashcards, shuffle them, mix up the order, because that's the way you're gonna sit down at a test and just go through it, you know? There still might be a problem on the test that either you're like, uh-oh, that's that one kind of problem and I just never quite figured it out, or I always mess this one up, and that's okay. If you know how to do nine out of 10 problems on the test, and there's just that one, you're hoping it wasn't on the test, but it is, but oh well. You know, that's 10%, you can probably get partial credit at least. But at least you knocked out the other nine fast because you practiced out of order, you recognize them fast, you got through the ones you know how to do fast, and you really have a lot of time at the end of the test to monkey around and try and get this one type of problem that you just know is really hard. Um, so, test out of order. That's the way to go. Do your homework. And by all means, do everything I tell you to do, which you can find all of at thattutorguy.com slash study tips. And of course, the site also has tons of videos. So when you're trying to figure out, hey, what are the steps for doing that one type of problem that always that I just know I can't do in this chapter and is like horrible? Well, guess what? You know, I've got videos covering that problem along with all the other problems types in every chapter of your class. So you can learn how to do them quick and the right way right off the bat. And of course, what I tell you, you can then make your cookbook that helps you remember how to do all those steps. And by doing all that, you're gonna end up being a math person or at least a math not hater rather than someone who like has anxiety and gets crushed by math and is like, you know, always in danger of dropping. So uh, visit our site, stick around, check it out, give it a try and you'll have a lot more fun. I mean, maybe not fun, but like, You'll get through math, it'll be okay.